Welcome back to The Historian. Today, we're setting sail on the high seas to dive into the life of one of America's greatest naval commanders, Chester Nimitz. From his humble beginnings to his triumphant achievements in World War II, let's get started. Chester Nimitz was born in 1885 in Fredericksburg, Texas. Growing up far from the ocean, young Chester dreamed of life on the high seas. Who needs a swimming pool when you have the wide open ocean, right? Hey Chester, what do you want to be when you grow up? A sailor, of course, and maybe command the entire Pacific fleet. You know, typical kid stuff. And I like being a sailor. Nimitz entered the U.S. Naval Academy at Annapolis and graduated seventh in his class in 1905. He quickly rose through the ranks, gaining a reputation for his leadership and technical skills. Sir, how do you know so much about submarines? Simple. I read the manual. Twice. Read the manual, Gramps. When World War II broke out, Nimitz was appointed Commander-in-Chief of the Pacific Fleet after the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941. He had the monumental task of turning the tide against the Japanese forces. Chester, the fleet's in bad shape. What's the plan? Easy. We'll rebuild it better, faster and stronger, and maybe add some cool new gadgets. Yeah, maybe add some more lights. One of his first major achievements was the Battle of Midway in June 1942. Nimitz's brilliant strategy and intelligence work led to a decisive victory, sinking four Japanese aircraft carriers and shifting the balance of power in the Pacific. Sir, we've hit their carriers. Great job. Now let's make sure they don't hit us back. Nick, make sure they didn't get past us. Nimitz was a master of using submarines to disrupt Japanese supply lines. His silent service wreaked havoc on enemy shipping, proving that sometimes the best offense is a sneaky offense. Captain, what's the plan? Hide, seek, and torpedo everything in sight. Hide, seek. Maybe they play hide, seek. In 1944, Nimitz oversaw the island hopping campaign, capturing key islands like Saipan, Guam, and Iwo Jima. Each victory brought the Allies closer to Japan. Sir, we took Iwo Jima. What's next? All right, sir. What happened next? Okinawa, of course. Okinawa. And after that, Tokyo for tea. Nimitz's leadership culminated in the Battle of Late Gulf, the largest naval battle in history. The victory ensured the liberation of the Philippines and crippled the Japanese Navy. Admiral, the enemy fleet is retreating. Perfect. Let's give them a farewell party they won't forget. We're having a big farewell parking lot party tonight. After the war, Nimitz served as Chief of Naval Operations, helping to rebuild the post-war Navy and shaping modern naval strategy. He retired in 1947, leaving behind a legacy of innovation and excellence. Admiral, what's your retirement plan? What's your plan so Maybe write a book or build a model fleet. Who knows? Maybe I'll write a book while I'm out. Nimitz passed away in 1966, but his legacy lives on in the annals of naval history. From his brilliant strategies to his unwavering leadership, Chester Nimitz remains a shining example of what it means to command the seas. Admiral, any final words of wisdom? Always be ready to adapt and overcome, and never underestimate the power of a well-placed torpedo. If you enjoyed this maritime journey, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more historical adventures. This is The Historian signing off.